In this video, we're going to talk about the object pull pattern. And this is going to be particularly useful for optimization inside of our games. You'll usually use this pattern when you have a lot of objects that are trying to be created or destroyed at a, in a short amount of time inside of your game. So like a, a rapid fire projectile or a, you know spawning tons and tons of particles at a time. And the object pull pattern allows us to solve that. So the object pull pattern says that instead of creating everything we want or destroying everything we want at the time when we need it, we're going to create it all up front and put it into a pool. And then during runtime, whenever something needs one of those objects that we've created, we're just going to get it from the pool. We're just going to activate it and deactivate it and then put it back in the pool when we don't need it anymore. So the idea is we're just so we're just doing all of our creation at the very beginning of the level, and we're working with a smaller number of objects than just creating everything whenever we need it. So something will request an object, we'll retrieve it, we'll retrieve this, whatever this object is, and then when we're done, or whatever we need to happen in the game, when we're done with it, when we would normally destroy it, we'll just put it back. And a, a little bit about how that code's gonna look, it's, it's gonna be way more complicated, of course, but we're going to have a pool of an object and this will just be a list of pooled objects. And in, inside of Unity, it's actually even more complicated because we need that to be a game object in many cases. We're gonna have our requester and we're gonna have our pool reference right here. We're gonna have a reference to this pool and then we are going to get an object when we need it instead of creating. And we're going to return the object when we no longer need it. And the example that we're gonna look at is how to do this with projectiles and there's one extra step of complication here, which I think is worth mentioning. We're gonna have our pool of projectiles that are created at the beginning, and we're gonna have a player turret. And when the player turret wants to fire a new projectile, it's going to request from the pool a projectile. It's going to get that, it's going to configure it, and it's gonna activate it, give it a speed, a damage, whatever. And it's also gonna give the projectile a reference to, to the pool so it knows how to return itself. Now there's probably another way you could do this. You could, um, you know, in your initial setup, you could pass the reference to them on creation. You know, there's many ways to implement this. I would, a lot of people also use a singleton pattern for object pooling. There's no wrong way to do it, but um, I do think it's worth mentioning that we're gonna do this uh, set up for the example, and this is just an overview of what that looks like. So let's take a look at our example. I'm going to hit play. Uh, I'll warn you the sound effects might be a little loud here, but we have a turret and we're going to shoot projectiles. And you'll see that this is our projectile pool. And whenever we need a projectile, it's going to activate one instead of creating a new one. And we only have these six right now. And you see how they'll get deactivated. But check this out too. If we fire a lot of them and we expand the size of our pool, we're going to dynamically um, add more objects to the pool if we need if we need to. So now our pool is bigger. And um, one part of object pooling is you can decide the size of the pool at the beginning. And if you need more, you can you can make them. But that's a much smaller hit than creating every single projectile you, you would ever need. So let's look at the setup. We have our object pool here. I have a reusable, just a generic version of an object pool. There's pros and cons to trying to do this in a generic. Uh, they would make some things easier, like the referencing, uh, if you just made the specifics. So if you just had projectile pool, but just to show you that you could start to do this, this, script is going to inherit from mono behavior and also take in a generic class as long as that class can be attached as a component. And inside of this, we're going to create our initial pool of objects. There's three main parts to the object pool pattern really. Inside of our pool, we're going to create our initial pool. We need a type of pool to create, so that's gonna be our T right here. In this case, it's a type of projectile. We create our initial pool. And then if we want to get something from the pool, we will call pool.activate from pool and it'll return something from the pool and it'll you know DQ it from there. And then whenever something no longer needs the object, we can we can 
get this back into the pool by calling re return to pool and we need to receive the object to put back in. That's about it. There's some specific things you could do here, like how do you actually create the initial objects and whatnot. You know, in this case, we're doing a generic, so it's a little more complicated. But let's say that if I wanted to create my projectile pool, I would have a projectile pool script. And in this case, I'm just inheriting and doing a um, generic and get saying this is the type of object I need to pull and I'm just going to call this project pool. Again, you could put all this other code inside of here and make it non-generic and it'd probably simplify some things, but it's up to you. I just, I wanted to reuse this to save myself some time later. And this project pool script we're putting on this object right here, this projectiles under object pools, which is just an empty object. The projectile pool, and as part of the script, it needs a prefab. So we're giving it the missile, and the missile needs to be a type of projectile. So we need a projectile script on it, right? Because we are we need to pull a type of projectile. So now we have our player turret, which is going to request a pulled object. And this, this script is just attached to the player turret right here. Um, just rotates and shoots. Other scripts, other sound effects and whatnot. But this script right here, we're getting a reference to the projectile pool. So we need to actually drag and drop our pool right there. Again, if you're using singleton pattern, you wouldn't really need this reference. You could just call it, but it's kind of up to you. Projectile pool. And then whenever we press the space bar, we want to fire. And so whenever we fire, um, funny thing here, I actually must have changed this at some point. Uh, we don't really need the check there, I don't believe, since we're just getting a pull from or we're getting a projectile from the pool. So just ignore that. And instead, we are going to create a projectile, call a new projectile, and get a projectile from the pool. We'll say activate from pool. And once we get it, I'm calling this assign pool, but you could call this projectile configure or something. On the projectile, I wanted to show you that you could call a method on the projectile. So we're just doing this right here, and we're passing the pool there so it can return itself whenever it comes in contact with something. Because I get a type of projectile from the pool, you can run anything you anything you want on the projectile if you want. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna call a method on it, potentially to give it a pool, and I am going to move it to my turret location. I'm going to rotate it to align with my turret, and I'm going to activate the object. So I'm going to say, is true, doing my feedback and whatnot, and then because I assigned the pool to the projectile right here, see I assigned it to the projectile. Whenever the projectile collides with something, it's gonna call this method called remove self. I'm saying if I have a pool assigned, then return it to the pool. If I don't, then just destroy it. And this is like if we didn't have object pooling enabled, this would be the standard create and destroy way to do it. That's the pattern. Um, as long as you have a pool of objects that when you hit play, gets grouped and deactivated, just waiting to use. My turret will request a new projectile when it's fired. It will tell the projectile, you know, what pool it needs to return to whenever it deactivates. Again, there, you know, that's the way I'm doing it. There's many ways to handle that particular connection. Um, but you can see, no matter how fast I fire, I'm going to fire as fast as I can. I'm never going to have more than, you know, this many missiles active at a time. But if I were creating and destroying this, um, not only would I be doing that at runtime, like whenever I actually need things to run smoothly, instead of creating, you know, like 200 or more bullets, I'm just recycling and reusing these ones right here. Right, like that's the most that I can that I can create, and that's not really that many compared to uh, how many that I probably just shot. Right, like at least thirty or forty. So anyway, yeah, super handy pattern. It's just reusing the same objects instead of creating and destroying objects, and this is just one way in which you could set that up. And um, very very useful when it comes to optimization, particularly if you're developing anything for mobile. Every little bit counts and um, this is I wouldn't even call this a little bit this is a, a pretty substantial efficiency boost for those kind of systems